It's November 1983, and the biggest moment in the history of Oxford Speedway was about to begin with the signing of Denmark's Hans Nielsen for a world record fee of £30,000. Hans is seen here with John Payne and Bernard Crapper after agreeing the deal. The 1983 Cheetah's Jacket, about to undergo a change of logo for the trip back into the British League. Bernard, John and Hans, the trio set to put Oxford back on the map after full backing from Northern Sports boss David Hawkins. Len Silver on the left is team manager with responsibility for seeing the Cheetahs back into the big time on an even keel. His experience in that important first year was invaluable as was the support of that lovely old lady, Gran England, who came to see the boys through thick and thin. It's her birthday here, and Hans presents her with a birthday card from the lads, which includes Jens Rasmussen, Ian Clark, Nigel Sparshot, and Mel Taylor. Another shot of the team on press day. A few riders were absent, but this time Nigel Diath, Mark Chessel, and Kevin Smart joined the regulars. One of the few successes on the individual front in 1984 was Marvin Cox's magnificent victory at King's Lynn in landing the European Under-21 title. Here, one of the Oxford fans can't hide his excitement as he gives Cocker a pat on the back. And more congratulations here as one Gary Kersley looks as though he's going to brain poor Cocker, but his whistle is working well. Cocker brings the trophy back to Sandy Lane for the official photograph and to show it to his many fans. More successes came Marvin's way when he picked up the British Junior title from Simon Cross and Andy Smith. The trio have all come a long way since, but injuries to Smith and latterly to Cross have meant they haven't picked up as many titles as they might have done. All three are England internationals now. Again, on the individual front, Hans Nielsen picks up the first of many when landing the Pride of the East at Saddlebow Road from John Louis and a young Kelvin Tatum. And there's more to come. Just keep watching. The Golden Helmet stayed in the hands of Nielsen for some time in 1984. The most exciting jewels coming against Eric Gunderson. But don't mention the name Carl Blackbird, who rode out of his skin to deprive the Dane at Sandy Lane. Here, Supporters Club President, the great Cheetah stalwart Pete Cundy, presents Hans with the helmet after another scalp. My God, Bernard, what have you done? Seems to be the thoughts of Hans Nielsen as they talk over tactics in the pits. No, Bernard hadn't been on a lunchtime session. Somebody had just started their bike up in front of Hans and the fumes got up his nose. Simon Wigg shows the style that was to take him to many titles, both team-wise and individually. You'll note it's a robin in the background. It had to be, didn't it? A touch of engine trouble for Ian Clark and Wiggy in the pits at Sandy Lane. Clarkie was always marvellous with his old rover and soon spotted this problem. Old campaigner Len Silver has never been short on advice, and here Nigel Sparshot gets some tips. Or is it, can you lend me a tenner until Friday? There is nothing like a dame, or two of them to be precise. Hans and Jens Rasmussen, or Rambo to the fans, take time out for a picture. Wiki, never camera shy or backward in pushing his sponsors, gives Don Godden a good plug here during the first season with Cheetahs. It's Wiggy again, and it's his birthday as admirer Nigel Diaz's mum steps up to hand over the birthday cake. Injuries got so bad at the stadium during 84 that management called in a local priest to exercise the bug. Cheetahs were falling thick and fast, and despite his presence and prayers, Mel Taylor crashed during the match to sustain a wrist injury. So once again, somebody upstairs didn't like Oxford. Or so it seemed. Klaus Lausch, Peter York, Hans Nielsen, all look in a somber mood, but it didn't work. And just to prove there was no hard feelings, Wiggy gave the Reverend a lift back to the pits. No, he didn't crash on the way. Well, it looks like press day and Marvin poses, followed by Ian Clark. On to the mighty Bellevue at Hyde Road, and Len Silver is the first to congratulate Nigel Diath on his first BL point. 
The occasion is the annual soccer match between Swappa and the Riders in aid of charity. It took place at Oxford United's ground in April, and the journalists came out on top. The Riders team consisted of Simon Wick, Rick Miller, Carl Glover, how did he get in, Malcolm Holloway, Mick Handley, and Sean McConnell. And at the front, there's Peter Glanz, Hans Nielsen, and the late Billy Sanders, Mitch Shearer, Peter Jacobson, and Stan Bear. There are not many people who get in front of Hans Nielsen, but Oxford Mail scribe John Gaysford puts all his knowledge of greyhound racing to good effect here, trapping well and leaving the Great Dane in his wake. The only difference is that Gaysford looks knackered and Nielsen is smiling. The Phil Neal look-alike, Simon Wigg, tries a spot of juggling during a slack moment in the game, and there were plenty. It's 1985, and as you can see by the badge, the start of great things for cheetahs. The pictures of Hans and his girlfriend, Suzanne, were taken at his lovely cottage deep in the heart of Cannock Chase, near Litchfield. Unlucky Wiggy doesn't get the best of starts here to a new campaign, but falls gracefully. At the same time, he's saying, Hey, Bernard, I've had a close look at the track and it needs more water. Hans was out of favour with Danish team manager Ole Olsen, and the Oxford fans soon let him know what they thought of him at the England-Denmark clash at Sandy Lane. Hans was reserved if you ever did, but the fans had the last laugh. One of Nielsen's first vans, converted like most speedway riders to take anything, including the kitchen sink. It was bright red and parked in his drive at Cannock Chase. You'll note there are no claims to fame on the livery, but all that was to change, and how. The master at work, as he leads two Kings Lynn riders out of the second bend at Oxford. Two of the greatest riders in the world, in Hans Nielsen and his great rival, Eric Gunderson. Another golden helmet clasp was in store, and this pick was posed before the battle at Cradley. Wiggy does his bit for public relations, and no one was better at it than the blonde bomber. Here he takes time out to sign autographs. Hans celebrates another individual title when landing the Midland Riders Championship, beating Eric Gunderson and Jan Anderson at Oxford. It's a case of let us spray. A superb action shot of Marvin Cox on the way to victory at Sandy Lane. We're a couple of swells, seems to be the theme, as Hans and Wiggy get ready to burst the bubbly after landing the British Open Pairs title at Wolverhampton. Now it's time to toast us, says Wiggy, as he's first in. Hans waits patiently while runners-up John Davis and Mitch Shearer and third-placed Eric Gunderson and Phil Collins await their turn. Hans Nielsen has the time to look round, though this Wolves pair are in hot pursuit during a league clash at the stadium. The man who kept Hans ticking over was mechanic Torben Schmidt. He spent his summers at Oxford with the Great Dane, and testimony to his skills was the fact that Hans rarely broke down. It looks like we're about to win something at last, judging by the delight shown on the face of Wiggy as he is congratulated by his skipper after a superb victory at Sandy Lane. Wiggy still in jubilant mood as he takes the parade with Marvin Cox. The scene is the vast Odsall Super Bowl at Bradford, looking out from the main stand. It's world final time, and this is about two hours before the start. It's the parade time, and Hans Nielsen peers round for John Gaysford's camera, with his great rival, Eric Gunderson, on the opposite side. Another shot from the top, and Hans seems cool and relaxed at one of the most trying times of the championship. Back to the world final. And it's the main Danes, Eric Gunderson and Hans Nielsen, battling it out for supremacy, with Jimmy Nielsen red in the background as the contest gets underway. A fine shot of the reigning world champion, Eric Gunderson, out on his own and looking superbly confident. Hans has the upper hand here over Kelvin Tatum and Jan Anderson bringing up the rear. Now it's fellow Dane Tommy Nudson's turn to see Hans's back wheel. Time to reflect, as Hans and his manager, Olaf Pedersen, view the action from the pits. You can also see John Jorgensen and Chris Morton taking time out between rides. Hans gets prepared for another ride on the way to three successive victories. 
However, he was to be the unfortunate victim of an untidy start in his fourth ride, which ultimately ruined his chances of landing the title for the first time. He was put on the deck at the first turn, ruining his best bike. It allowed Eric to come back into contention, and as you can see here, soon made his way to the front to pluck the title out of nowhere for the second year running. Still with the earlier action, Hans opens up a gap over Tommy Knudsen and the rest of close order. The Dane is well clear here, but disappointment was yet to come. Here he prepares for another outing in the sunshine at Bradford, looking as immaculate as ever. It's another easy ride as Hans saunters in to complete his third successes victory. It's the podium, and Hans won't be too happy at this time, as he meets his sponsors, having finished runner-up to his countryman Gunderson for the second year running. The look that says it all as he waits for the announcements. He gets the garlands, the champagne and trophy, but not the one he was looking for. Sam Ermolenko looks wistful, while Eric waits to hold the trophy aloft and commiserates with Hans. Sorry, buddy, it's mine again. Better luck next year. One world title Oxford did celebrate in 1985 was Wiggy's World Long Track title. It was the Blonde Bomber's first victory in the event and capped a great season. He gets a bouquet from Miss Northern Sports on his return to the stadium, and that was in spectacular style. Wiggy landed at Sandy Lane in a helicopter, much to the delight of the huge crowd who welcomed back their hero. Cheetah's first major title in years came with the Speedway Star KO Cup final victory over Ipswich at the stadium. There was much to celebrate for youngsters Marvin Cox, Troy Butler and a not so young Andy Graham. The two heroes, Wiggy and Troy Butler, who pulled off a magnificent piece of riding in the final heat to silence the witches who thought they had the trophy in the bag. Look what we've got is the message to Oxford fans as Hans Nielsen celebrates his first ever team triumph. No, it's not Mr. Pastry. It's Simon Wigg after being given the flower bomb treatment by the fans during the victory celebrations. The skipper and Peter York never escaped the home pride bag, but it didn't interrupt the usual interview after the victory. What a happy trio. They all have been through the flour mill, but the delighted look on the faces of Troy Butler, Marvin Cox and Ali Stevens is there for all to see. Hans Nielsen looks as though he's covered in spaghetti as he holds the trophy aloft for the fans to see, but he's in such a happy mood he could have coped with anything that night. This is the start of the first British League title celebrations at Oxford, as Wiggy and Marvin shoulder skipper Hans Nielsen. But we haven't finished with that KO Cup yet, as Hans gives the trophy another kiss. And yes, it's more flower power for poor old Wiggy, as he really gets the treatment here. No, it wasn't foggy, just a happy hand smiling through the countless flower bombs. On to the BL celebrations, and John Tremblin comes in for a right old soaking from Bernard Crapper on the victory parade even before he can get a suck of his ice cream. We've got it, lads, says Hans Nielsen, holding the coveted British League trophy aloft for the cameras. Hello, they're still celebrating that KO Cup win, but I suppose it was their first. Wiggy gets to crack the champagne as the British League title is firmly in the hands of cheaters, and John Trembles hasn't touched his ice cream. The poor chap is now having to take cover from Wiggy's champagne burst. Will he ever get a taste of that cornet? Come on, Wiggy. We've had enough of that KO Cup win. But you can't deny him his moment of glory, I suppose. He's still at it, this time with old faithful John Hancocks, an integral part of the setup at Cowley. They won't lie down, will they? Troy and Ali. What a great moment for both teenagers, and a night they will never forget. Ali gets his trophy watched admiringly by his skipper, Hans Nielsen. Even Marvin Cox wants to stretch out the KO Cup celebrations, complete with his minder, Bernard Crapper, in the background, and surrounded by fans. What a team! 
They're all here to join in the happy scenes as the injured Troy Butler and Andy Graham join Lausch, Cox, Nielsen, Wig, Rasmussen, Stevens and Diaz. They are flanked by team manager Bernard Crapper and John Tremblay. The official picture. They keep changing all the time. Here, Troy and Andy are back in the team with Nigel and Klaus in Mufti. Wiggy prepares to launch another Scud champagne missile, but Mike Patriot has him covered with his trusty lens. There was no shortage of end-of-season celebrations, and Northern Sports gave a big party at the Elms Ifley, where the team celebrated the winning of the British League, KO and Marlborough Cups, and Wiggy's long track title. The man in the centre of the picture is responsible for bringing the top stars to Oxford, and David Hawkins can take a bow. The unsung heroes from 85 were the juniors who kept smiling through adversity. John Sermon led the lads with support from Paul Pratt, Paul Atkins, Richard Harris, and one other whose name escapes me. John Tremblin was the man in charge until promoted to the first team. Another celebration shot for the victorious cheaters. We still can't get away from that BL trophy success, but we have to keep plugging it in case we don't win it again. And it's Cocker lets rip an almighty shower of champagne on the fans. Have one for me seems to be the thoughts of a happy hands Nielsen to Marvin Cox, and the pair are joined by Wiggy. The Midland Cup, clinched at Cradley, is proudly displayed by Ali, Nigel and Troy. It's a proud Bernard Crapper that stands alongside one of his mainstays, Simon Wick, with the magnificent British League trophy. Wiggy threw his own party at Scamp's nightclub to celebrate his world long track triumph, and riders from all over the country came to celebrate. Here, Previn Erickson, Kai Naimi and Dennis Segolis joined their host for the picture. Wiggy and Hans show off the cheetah's magnificent trophy hall at the Elms party. The three trophies that meant so much to the team and the fans, left to right, the Midland Cup, the British League Cup and the KO Cup. You've got to be joking, Bernard. I've heard all about those swinging from the chandelier jokes, but this takes the biscuit. One of the great stalwarts of Oxford Speedway, Mick Harris, was entitled to get his hands on the trophies during the civic reception afforded the team by the city council at the town hall. The Cheetahs team arrived at the town hall in a double-decker, open-top bus, much to the delight of the hundreds of fans who lined the route. You can see John Payne and Hans lifting the trophy, along with Andy Graham, Marvin and Anne Cross. A great shot of the skipper leaning over the Lord Mayor's balcony to show off the main trophies to his adoring fans. These supporters knew something, having prepared the banner in time for the victory parade. There were many good-humoured banners on display, but only this one caught the photographer's eye. 1986. Probably the best ever year for Oxford Speedway, with its first world individual champion in Hans Nielsen, retaining the British League and BL pairs, sharing the KO Cup with Cradley, retaining the Midland Cup and beaten League Cup finalists. It certainly proved that 1986 was a great year for Oxford, and this man, Per Sorensen, pictured with Marvin Cox, became the signing of the season for the Cheetahs. Another reason for the Cheetah's success was the bubbly Simon Wick, seen here signing on with John Payne. Hans even tried indoor ice racing at Telford and still came out on top. Marvin and team manager John Tremblin go through the previous night's meeting at Coventry. Supporter John West never failed to come with an ingenious banner for the special occasion of the test match between England and America at Cowley. Cowley favourite Sam Ermolenko and John Cook were in the American team, and you can also spot Chris Morton, Jeremy Doncaster, Neil Evitz and Cocker on the parade wagon. A shot of Marvin Cox in full flow at Cowley. Hans Nielsen pictured with one of his many trophies after the Midland Riders Championship. 
Here, he parades the Marlborough Midland Cup in what is becoming a season to savour. The new stadium complex was close to completion as Bernard Crapper, John Tremblin, Bob Radford and John Payne surveyed the scene. This is one of the later rounds of the World Championship at Bradford, as Simon Wigg and Andy Graham try their luck. Cocker looks particularly happy, despite being caked in wet shale. Oh, it's Cocker again, checking the scores out with BC at the British final at Coventry. Another shot of Cocker on parade at the British final. We're off to Poland, seems to be the theme from Cocker and Hands at Bradford's Otzel Stadium. It was one of Cocker's best years at Cowley, and here he's seen holding aloft the golden helmet, which he held for several weeks. <laughs> Me? Nervous about going to Poland? Never, says six a time, Cocker. He even picked up the Rider of the Month award from Scotty Johnman. The terrible trio with the Marlborough Midland Cup on a cold, cradly night. Hans shows his prowess on a scramble bike at Crowton during a rare moment of relaxation. Hans gets another trophy in the bag when landing the British Riders' Championship at Hyde Road from Sean Moran and Eric Gunderson. Another first for Hans Nielsen came when he completed a maximum in all ten away BL matches. He got full marks at Ipswich. Per Sorensen, signed from Swindon in May, turned Cheetahs into a championship winning side. It's the Intercontinental Final at Bradford and Hans shows the way from Tommy Knudsen and Jeremy Doncaster. This time he's in the lead with Kelvin Tatum on his outside. His great rival, Eric Gunderson, gets the drop here as they sweep out of the bend at Oddsall. The legendary Ivan Major stepped in to give Hans that missing 5% to land his first world title in Poland. Marvin Cox proudly flies the Union Jack at the Commonwealth final at Hyde Road. And it's back to Odsal, and it's Jimmy Nilsson giving Cocker a rough ride here. Then it's the turn of Eric Gunderson, Tommy Knudsen and Jano Pedersen to make him feel at home. Here, he trails Kelvin Tatum and John Cook, but he is notching up the qualifying points. Here's Cocker out on his own and on the way to his first ever world final. He's hard on the heels of the mighty Jano here. He makes a good start here behind John Cook as they come out of the first bend, but still has some ground to make up on the Swede in red. He's surely going to take him now. Cocker faces a tight bend in the thick of Kelvin Tatum and Jimmy Nilsson on the inside and Larry Ross on the outer. It came down to a runoff for the last qualifying place and a fair trap from Cocker did the trick over Jan Anderson. Come on, Jan, where are you? I'm through to Poland and it's a great feeling. How about that then, as Cocker awaits the congratulations after his final runoff? Peter Johns is the first to offer congratulations, but toothless tiger John Trembles is ecstatic. Give us a lift up, boys, says Cocker, as Simon Wig, Peter Johns, Bernard Crapper and Trembles deliver the bumps. On to the giant Slasky Stadium in Katowice, and Cocker is resplendent in brand new leathers. Hans looks a bit tentative, but his greatest moment is just around the corner. The boys from Blighty, Cocker and Kelvin Tatum, team up in the same parade car. Cocker finds things hard behind the Russians in this heat. He's fighting back, but still has some leeway to make up. Eric Gunderson gets the drop on Hans in the opening races, and it looked as though the Cradley Flyer was on his way to a hat trick. Hans gets a little closer on the second lap, but Eric held on. This is better as Hans powers away from Jimmy Nielsen. Tommy Knudsen, very unlucky not to land the title after his brush with Nielsen after the interval, seen here in full flow. Hans in front again as he pulls well clear of the Russian. It's all over and Hans poses with third place Kelvin Tatum on the rostrum. 
It's all mine, says Hans, as he plants a kiss on that elusive world final trophy. Runner-up Jano gets in the picture as Hans poses with Miss Poland on his unforgettable night. Among his many prizes was the Sword of Damocles, but he's a happy man and revels in the celebrations. Look what I've got, and it's been worth the wait, seems to be the Great Dane's thoughts. Back home at Cowley and a perfect sunset, as well as thousands of fans greet Hans and Suzanne on their return from Poland. There's no mistaking his delight in front of the Cowley hordes. Let's sit back and watch Hans Nielsen's triumphant return to Cowley.
The hard work over, Hans, Mike Patrick, John Gaysford, Bernard Crapper and Hans Mechanic, Torben Smith, get ready to celebrate. The champion's banner is about to signal the start of more celebrations as cheetahs clinch the title at neighbouring Swindon. A funny combination, but ice cream and champagne went down well as the boys celebrate at Blunsdon. John Payne plays it cool, sitting down to drink his champers, while the lads lap up the cheers from their adoring fans. The Oxford fans have their own bubbly as the team continues to soak up the atmosphere. Hands can't take it all in, while John is joined by Bernard to sink another bottle or two. Hands lets fly with more bubbly as the celebrations go on, and even our own Pip Lamb was there for the great moment. The fans continue their non-stop roar, while this was a very special night for Per Sorensen, who had been released by Swindon earlier in the season. Hands, more than ready for action, even has the cheek to accept a Swindon race jacket from Clive Fisher. Now there's a more acceptable present as he receives the golden helmet from Swindon MP Martin Coombs. Number one fan, John West, knew how to welcome Hans back to Cowley. And here, back home at Cowley, they can at last show the British League trophy to the fans, as they show the rest of the league that they're top of the ladder. Per Sorensen offers congratulations to John Sermon on the parade. While look what we've got here seems to be the theme of Hans Nielsen, John Payne and Marvin Cox in the office at Cowley. World Championship Trophy, British League, KO Cup and Marlborough Midland Cup. The skipper parades the BL Trophy while the Magnificent Seven take a photo call. Hans takes another hold on the Midland Cup, while Wiggy certainly has his fans in the Test Match at Oxford. Marvin Cox gets congratulations from Simon Wigg and Hans Nielsen after another cracking ride at Cowley. As we can see here, Cocker is keen to show the press the great big hole he has just blown in his motor. Meanwhile, Bernard Crapper takes a hair of the hound that bit him the night before in the weekender at Kings Lynn and Ipswich. And Per Sorensen stays busy with a tyre change. The blonde bomber, Simon Wigg, picks up another England trophy at Odsall. Who's going to clean those, I wonder? 1987. There wasn't a lot to cheer about on the domestic front after being knocked out of the KO Cup semi-finals and also surrendering the Midland and British trophies to Cradley. However, Hans Nielsen won his second successive world title and soon after notched up his hundredth maximum for cheetahs. A new look team to greet the new season with the return of Ali Stevens and Jens Rasmussen from loan duty. But it's a hard act to follow for these boys. Wiggy, looking all teeth and hair, was one of those who had to go because of the 45-point limit. Hans trying to say that he is Danish through and through with his Viking helmet. A new sponsorship deal with local brewers Ein Coop, and Hans says cheers with Kevin Hederley. It may look like a social occasion, but BC and Hans are once again sorting out a deal for the new season. It's practice day and Hans goes all out to test his new engine. 
Hans and Eric Gunderson, two of the greats of modern day Speedway, exchange a joke before the meeting at Cradley. It's John Tremblin's 50th birthday, and Bernard Crapper gives him the once over with Colin Wooden's stethoscope. Even though he's jetting all over the world, he still finds time to visit this youngster in hospital. The Commonwealth final at Hyde Road, with Marvin Cox in third place behind Kelvin Tatum and Simon Cross. Hans poses with rival skipper Richard Helson at Swindon, and a, a young fan. Sadly, the last picture of the great Kenny Carter at Odsall before his untimely death. A new Oxford group? No, it's just Kevin Smart, John Sermon, Ali Stevens and Andy Graham trying out the equipment at Sandy Lane. On to the first ever two-day world final in Amsterdam and Hans is on parade and ready. He manages to pull one of his famous wheelies even though it's the world classic. He's in control here but made hard work of it on the opening day. Way out in front on the first bend on the second day and winging in towards retaining his title. Hands, just behind the colourful starter, strikes a familiar pose at liftoff. It's all over, and the mighty Dane is up where he belongs, on the podium, a winner again. He holds the trophy aloft, with Eric Gunderson on the right and Sam Ermolenko left. The parade in an antique car, but there's nothing old-fashioned about this day. Nothing but the best for Hans on his return to Cowley, where the specially hired Bentley carried the appropriate number plate. So let's sit back once again and soak up the atmosphere of the two-time world's champion's return to a packed Cowley stadium.
That brings us to the end of this episode. But join us again in 1993 for part two of the Oxford Cheetahs picture video.